the problem with talking about um, art, I think, is that there's still a hangover from romantic assumptions that art intrinsically has something. Mm. I, I don't think art intrinsically has very much at all. I think nearly everything that it has is conferred upon it by our collective history of experiencing art. So, so we create the value. I think when something is exciting to you, a picture or a piece of music, what's exciting is that you're hearing the latest sentence in a conversation you've been having all your life. Mm. Um, or when you look at a painting, you don't just see that painting, you see every other picture you've ever seen. So that painting is in the context of every picture you've ever seen. So it's, I, when I do a talk about this sometimes, a lecture, I do a quite good trick. I have projected on the screen behind me because I, I draw things and so on as I'm talking. And at the top left corner of the screen is this little sentence which says, I used to have a car like that. And I don't ever draw attention to it or mention it, I just carry on doing. But the sentence is always up there. And um, at a certain point, I'm talking about the idea of, this idea of the art being the, a piece of art being the latest or the, the most final for you at that moment statement in this long conversation you've been having. And then I tell this story about this American guy who came to England to discover his ancestors who came from Devon. And he was driving around Devon. He was a very wealthy Texan, actually. Um, and he sees an old farmer on the, sitting, leaning on a gate. And he says, is this your land? And the farmer says, yeah, it is. It go all the way from the top of the hill there down to the river. That's all mine. And the Texan laughs and he says, oh, if I get up in the morning, I could drive all day before I get to the other end of my land. And the farmer says, yeah, I used to have a car like that. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the yeah. point is, until you hear the rest of the story, yeah. the sentence makes no sense yeah. at all. You don't know what it's about. And I think mm. th one of the first things to understand about artworks is that they're all punchlines. Mm. They're all the latest sentence in the story. And they don't make sense in the abstract. Um, so you, first of all, you're never looking at one piece of art. You're looking at that in terms, in, in a huge context. The whole of the rest of the joke is, is there, you know. Mm -hmm. So this thing slots in. So what you're aware of are differences. Yeah. Now, once you understand that, it's much easier to understand what music is doing. You might, whatever you've heard, you might never have heard something as soft as that, or as angular, or as loud or whatever it is. So, and of course those properties have, have meaning to you. Um, you know, when I first started making ambient music, the, f the first thing <laughs> reviewers noticed was everything that was missing. <laughs> doesn't have a beat, it doesn't have a melody, doesn't really have any chords, doesn't have words. <laughs> um, so, so all it had was space actually, and that's what people picked up on. They'd never heard music with yeah. as much space as that, actually. So the difference was both what it was missing and what it therefore had yeah. as, a, as a result. I've been thinking about this way of thinking about music as, as basically controlled surprise. Mm -hmm. That we have this deep evolutionary instinct to be interested in surprising facts about the world. When we make a prediction, this is going to end this way, and it doesn't our brains are wired to pay attention to it. Yeah. And so that keeps us searching out new sounds and new, new melodies or new formal possibilities yes. because we have to be surprised on some level. But it's interesting, isn't it, that you can, you can re-experience that surprise lots and lots of times yeah. and still love it. Whereas if I told you that joke again, it wouldn't be so funny, would it? Yeah. And if I told it to you then for a third time, <laughs> you'd yeah. start to get a bit fed up with it. And if I told you about 150 times that joke, hey, I'd Stephen, I've got, a, I've got a really good one. <laughs> this is about, there's this guy who comes over from America to find his roots in Devon, and he meets this <laughs> farmer. So it's interesting yeah. to me that we... It has a long half-life somehow. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Music um, can actually remain 
as I can attest to now, exciting for 40 or 50 years. Yeah. You still like it. So, so there's obviously something more complicated than, yeah. than my punchline theory going on as yeah. well.